Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to swatch out my, what I've called my butterfly palette and I've called it my butterfly palette because it's just a black metal tin, watercolor tin and I've put a couple of butterfly stickers on so that's why it's the butterfly palette. And in it are a lot of my other student grade paints like the first row up until here, the paint spray, that's, those are all Van Gogh paints. These are a couple of scrim, scrim watercolors that I got from an upgrade box. Then this is um, Schmincke Olive Green, but the non-lightfast version, Schmincke Random Grey, my three Cotman colors, and the questionable Rosa Gallery paints that I've taken out of my Rosa gallery classic palette and they all live together like this at the moment and I want to swatch them all out and let's get started the first one is Chinese white PW4 which I don't really use very much but it was in the palette I have I think 19 Van Gogh paints in total I bought one of their pocket boxes that had 12 colors plus three extra so there was 15 and then I've had a few in Upgrade boxes when I was still subscribe, subscribed to Upgrade. The next one is Permanent Lemon Yellow, which is PY184. And what is PY184? It's Bismuth Yellow, I think. It's semi-opaque and it's a good replacement for Cadmium Lemon Yellow apparently and I mean it certainly looks very lemon yellowy and I think I don't mind a bit of opacity in the yellows because they're so they can often be very low staining then the next one is as a yellow medium which is a mixture of py 154 and p 62 I think that's benzimeter's lone orange and Benzimeter's Lone Yellow, isn't it? Yeah. And I think the Van Gogh paints are all rated light fast, but there are a few in there that can be there are a few in there that might fade in light washes. Then the next one is Indian Yellow. It's one of my upgrade ones, and I'm really happy I got this one, even though I think this is the diary diary light yellow. I think that one is one that might be fading a little bit if you have it in a light wash. But I use this palette in my sketchbooks and in stuff that is definitely not going to see much light, so I don't really mind. Then we have permanent red light, which is pyro red. PR 254. And that's a good replacement for cadmium red light, I'd say. I don't know if the uh, might have a little bit of opacity. It's a it's a nice warm red. I do actually quite like this. Then the next one is Mara Lake Deep, PR 264. And that's is it like pyro red ruby I think? It's also a really nice color. Then we have Quinacodon Rose, PB19. And this was one of the extras, the two, three bonus paints that were in the box that I bought. And that was one of the reasons why I bought them. I wouldn't have bought the 12 count box, I think, because I was quite keen on having a coin rose, actually. And the next one is Quinacodon Purple Red, PB55, which was also one of my upgrade goodies. I'm not subscribed to upgrade, upgrade anymore at the moment, and since I've stopped my subscription, there were so many watercolors in the boxes. It's a bit upsetting actually. 
So the next one is Ultramarine Deep PB29. I do actually really quite like the Van Gogh colors. They are they're not very expensive. They're good quality. And I've actually used these quite a bit. I think last year during World Watercolor Month, I mostly painted with them, certainly in the beginning. Then we have Prussian Blue, PB27. And I love Prussian Blue. It's just a shame that it goes like brown and sunshine and then needs to go and lie in the dark to recover. That's a gorgeous blue. But I guess if you have a good phalo blue, you can actually replace that. And the next one is Cerulean Blue Phalo, which is a mixture of PB15 and PEW6. And I actually like it more than I thought I would. I thought I wouldn't be a big fan because of the titanium white in there. But if you water it down, it actually does get a bit transparent. It's not super opaque. And then it's actually quite a nice color for skies. And also for mixing sometimes. Then the next one is another one of my upgrade paints and that, this one is in indigo and it's a mixture of pbk6 and PB, uh, pb15 and pbk6 i shouldn't have painted over that before i checked that but i'm pretty sure that's what it is and it's a lovely indigo actually i was i was quite glad when i got this one because it makes a nice addition and it's really nice indigo then I have turquoise green, which according to all the information on the tube and on the Royal Talents website is PB15 and PB29. I do not understand how with PB15 and PB29 you get this color, which is gorgeous. It's a bit hard to rewet. It's the only one that's a bit hard to rewet, but even, even so, this one, without having been pre-wet, came along quite nicely. But yeah. How do you, by mixing phalo blue and ultramarine blue, get this? And I always wonder if what it actually is, is PG7 phalo green blue shade with ultramarine blue, because there's definitely granulation in here. So I can see the ultramarine blue. I just don't see how these two make that color, but it's lovely. And I'm very glad I have it. Maybe I should. I do have PB29 and PG7. Maybe I should mix them and see if I can uh, replicate that. If I can find a scrap of watercolor paper, I might do that at the end. Because this Viridian is PG7. It's a student grade, student grade paint, so of course there's no real Viridian in there. So then next we have Sap Green, which is a mixture of PY129 and PG7. PY129 is green gold, isn't it? I think so. And it's a nice Sap Green. I, I like this one. And then we have yellow ochre, PY42, and I've got this in the pan that came in my, my set, and I've also got a tube that I got from, from Upgrade. There was one box with, which had the indigo, the turquoise green, and the yellow ochre, which are actually quite nice together. And then another box with the Indian yellow and the quinac from purple red. And I think maybe the scrim watercolors as well, were they all together in one box? I think they might have been, because that's how I got those scrim dots that will come up in a second. So then I have Burnt Sienna, which is their old formulation. I think now their Burnt Sienna is only PR 101, but this one is still PR 101 and PBK 11. And I don't actually mind that. You can't really tell that it's PBK 11 in there, apart from the granulation that it ha this has a little bit. So let's granulate a little bit. And when you mix the burnt sienna with the, the ultramarine deep, 
I've got quite a lot of granulation, so I was quite happy with that. Then is burnt umber. I think the burnt umber might also have been one of the ones that was added. I think so was the Prussian blue actually. And the burnt umber is PR 101 and PBK6. I think that they've also changed that now, and I'm not sure if this is just a PR 101 now or if it's a PBR7 even. But I'm pretty sure they've gone to single pigment for the burnt umber. But I've had this box for two or three years. So when, when I bought this, it was still the old formulation. And then finally we have Paints Grey, which is a mixture of PBK6 and PB19. Make sure I got the right one. It's a nice one, but the, the Cotman Paints Grey is going to come later, and I think I prefer the Cotman Paints Grey, actually. But it's a good Paints Grey. It does the job. There's nothing wrong with it. So yeah, that's the end of all the Van Gogh colors. I'm still on camera. Yes, I am. Good. And they really are. They are good. A good student grade set. So if you just want to find a good, solid student grade set, these are really quite good. So now come the scrim colors that were also from an upgrade box. And I don't, don't have any pigment information for those. And I don't know what their names are either. That's why they live in here. I mean, this almost looks like it might be a pyro red or a mixture of pyro red and pyro orange. I don't think it's a cadmium. It's not opaque enough for that, even though there's a bit of opacity. Maybe. Well, no, not really. But it, this is, it's a really nice color. But seeing as I don't know what it is, I put it in there. And then there's the blue, which I'm pretty sure is a phthalo blue. I mean, look at that. How can that not be a phthalo blue? So it should actually be light fast. But as I don't know, I just keep it in here. And it's not like I need a phthalo blue in my in my professional paints. I've got some phthalo blues. And these were dots. I'll show you the pans again. These two here. Quite generous dots, so they'll last me a while as well. I mean, certainly this one, because there's no pure phthalo blue in the Van Gogh palette. It's actually it's good to have, and I mean, these two are so close together. But still, it's it's a tiny bit more orange, this one. So then the next one is the Schmincke Olive Green, which is a mixture of PB15 and PG8. And because it's PG8, it's not... It's got, like, medium light fastness, but it does... It does fade apparently, which is a shame because it's a lovely green and I really like PG8. I do like that pigment, but it's not light fast. Still, for playing around in my sketchbook, it's good enough. And it mixes beautifully with all the um, cooler reds, for instance. Then, next one is Schmincke Random Grey. Sorry, I had to cough. The next one is Schmincke Random Grey. And because this is just all the leftover pigments mixed together, I don't know what's in there, if it's light fast. And that's why it's in this palette. This granulates really nicely, really, really beautifully though. So it's, it's a good one in general to just have and mix in with your student grade paints. When you're not concerned about light fastness and just add some granulation because you can actually mix it with almost anything. Maybe I should make a video about that, what you can do with that. Then we have the Cotman Gamboge U, which is a mixture of PY150 and PR209. And this is a lovely yellow. This is, I mean, as nice as all of these yellows are, this is the kind of yellow that I want in my palette. I just... I mean, ideally it would just be a PY150, but I think this is pretty good as well. And I do really like that. 
Then is the Cotman Elizabeth Crimson U, and it's the old one with the PR206. The new version of the Elizabeth Crimson U uses PR179, just a perline maroon. I think. And this is quinacridone maroon, but seeing as the pigment is apparently going out of production for the car industry, it's not going to be available for the art industry anymore either. And then is the Cartman Paint Gray, which I really like. It's a mixture of PBK7, PB29, and PB15. And because it has ultramarine blue in it, it granulates and it's beautiful. So for student grade paint sprays, this is definitely my favorite. So and then we come to the Rosa Gallery ones. First one is Carmine, which is a beautiful color, but there's some question of, questions about the light fastness of, of this, even though it is rated three stars of three. But I've seen some reports that this can fade, especially in washes, I think. It's Nafta red. And I mean, it is a beautiful, beautiful, cool red. But if you have a quinacridone rose, I think, which is definitely, which is light fast, you can do without that. Then is the matter red, which is also beautiful. It's a mixture of PR 177 and PR 264. And the PR264 is here. I think the PR264 is okay, but the one in PR177 is also one of the ones that I think certainly in washes can fade quite quickly. Even though, I mean, this is also, it's a beautiful color and it's a good one to have in a sketchbook. And because it's a full pan, a rosa full pan with 2.5 milliliters, I've got plenty of it. Then is the Rosa Gallery Opera Rose, which is a mixture of PR122 and a fugitive dye, neon dye. So I knew this was going to be fugitive when I bought it, but because it was cheap, I thought I'll see what all the fuss is about. And I mean, I can see why you want it sometimes, even though it's not a necessary color for me, I think. And next is Rosa Gallery Olive Green. Just a mixture of PG17, PY1, and PBK7. And I think the PY1 is the one that is not very light fast, which is why this Rosa rate this two stars out of three for light fastness. And I mean, it's a beautiful olive green. It's also more of an olive green than the Schmenke olive green even though this is also a beautiful green. But yes, I decided to take that out of my palette because I'd rather have single pigment greens and then I can mix the green I want without black as well and without fading issues. Then is the Rosa Gallery um, CPR, which is a mixture of PBR7, PBK7 and PR177. And again, the PR177 is slightly questionable, I think. So that's why that's gone out. And also I've got so many single pigment browns in my Rosa Gallery palette that I don't really need this. But it's good to have, especially since I don't have that many other browns. I have the Burnt Sienna and the Burnt Umber, but this is a bit darker still because there's black in it for starters. Well, so there's black in those as well, but it must be less. But yeah, they're all different shades, so it's good. And then finally is the neutral black, which is a mixture of PB15 colon 1, PBK7, and PR177 again. So that's why I've taken that out also, because I have the Rosa Gallery Paints Grey, which I probably prefer, even though it's a bit bluer, more blue leaning, obviously. But I don't mind that. I do actually quite like mixing my own blacks anyway. With blues and oranges and greens and reds and 
not so much violets and yellows actually but so there we are all of my 32 butterfly palette colors and it's actually it's actually really quite useful seeing them all swatched out like this so i know what i have and i know what i can use even though as i said those are my sketchbook playing around paints for figuring stuff out before i use my more expensive or my in some cases not even more expensive my rosa gallery paints i don't think they're actually more expensive they're still better quality though so thank you for joining me for this swatching session please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy watching people swatch their watercolors because i've got more coming thank you very much for watching bye now bye bye